there's a confidence level that it takes to do almost anything well. Right. And when and I knew this when when I started in sitcoms, where I go, my plan is just as good, or sometimes better than what they have planned. And when I knew that for sure, I knew I was ready to direct. Hi, I'm Judy Kane, and welcome to Hollywood Game Changers. I am so excited. My guest today is a director. She was a uh, actress to begin, but we're gonna talk about that. Producer, teacher, uh, she's known for her directing on hit shows such as Eve, Girlfriends, The Game, Bull, Legacy, Station 19, the list goes on and on. We are very, very pleased to have Mary Lou Belli with us today. Yay! Oh, thank you, Judy. It's so yes. great to spend time with you. I know. We go way back. Way, way back. Way to the way, way, way back. So um, I always like to just, you know, do a little bit about your roots. I knew you grew up in New Jersey. I did. Yeah. I was okay. born in Patterson, raised in Clifton, which is about 14 miles outside the city. And that's a little town, right? It, no, no, it's pretty sizable. It's oh, it pretty is. sizable, and it's... Um, uh, I mean, you can see New York City from... Oh, you can. Clifton is a cliff. Oh, um, I didn't know and, that. And the mountains that uh, where that cliff is um, were the source of the big industry, which was a silk mo- town, oh. silk milling town, Patterson, because it had waterfalls. Interesting. And did your parents uh, migrate there? I know your mom's Italian, my, my right? My dad came from Italy came and from came Italy. right to New Jersey. Half, okay. the, half the family went to to New Jersey, half the uh, other half went to Toronto. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, a lot of a lot of Northern Italians mm-hmm. in that part of the world. You know, I'm half Northern Italian. I do not think I knew this. Yeah, from, yeah. Uh, um, why am I forgetting? Whoa! Milano? Y- no, Milano. no, the other one. Um, Umbria? <laughs> Jesus, no, Northern. Oh my God! It'll come. My to dad's me. from was born Torino. in Torino. Right. My dad was born in a little town called Cortina d'Ampezzo, which is right next to Cortina. Okay. Which is a huge ski resort. Yeah. Um, uh, they've held the Olympics there once, and are the next Winter Olympics will be there as well. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So okay. So um, you grew up there, and you went to Penn State. When I know that because you have several friends. I have several friends yes, who I think went there. The one with who you. introduced us. Yeah. Sue yes, Ann Smoke, Smoke, a wonderful yeah. actress. Yes. So, uh, so you went to school. Did you study acting? I was. I, yeah. I, I got my um, BA in um, theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, I graduated in three years and got to New York wow, quickly because I years. wanted to um, act. I wanted to act. I wanted to act while I still looked very young. And <laughs> by very young, I mean I was in my early early twenties, but I looked like I was. 14, and yes. I literally was competing. I mean, there were callbacks I had, you know, avails for commercials where, I mean, I looked at the other person who might have gotten the commercial, and I went, wow, I'm way older than that. <laughs> but you have always looked uh, uh, young, always young. Thank you. Yes, Thank young, you. I, young I, 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 I hope that's true to the end. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Good and some genes. of it's just says staying healthy. I mean, I still, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm available, I take I'm still in dance class three times a week. Wow. You know, yeah. I, I... I know you eat well. And oh, eat right. I yeah. eat well. Yeah. I run. Um, uh, not I run. I bicycle. Uh-huh. I, I work out every morning. So, wow. Yeah. Good for you. Hmm. Yeah, because you are the energizer bunny. You know what? I wish I could take credit for that. I wake up this way in the morning. I, I You know, there's people who open their eyes and it's like, how do I get out of bed? And I have huge empathy for those people yeah. because I once was on a medication that did that to me. Oh. And it was a life changer in the sense that I understood a lot of the population that has those kind of challenges. It was hard for me because I literally could not get to the grocery store and shop because I would have to pull over because I was weeping in my car. Um, Was this menopause? I don't want to... No, it wasn't menopause, but it was a a hormone drug. It was a birth control drug, Uh, which people statistically committed suicide on. <laughs> during my recovery of it, um, but um, no. Uh, but I wake up in the morning and I am ready to go. Yeah, and your brain is just—I know you. You have millions of ideas, and the 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 amazing thing about Mary Lou, as you'll find out in a moment, is uh, whatever she wants, she goes after it, and she, you get it. Uh, sometimes, 
and if not, you From know, this there's, there's, there's you no do. roadblocks. There's only detours. That's but, correct. Um, I've, I've been very blessed in able to get a lot of the things I've hoped and wished for and dreamed about. So well, I'm let's very say grateful for them. Absolutely, uh, luck has something to do with it. But you have drive and commitment and focus, like I've ne- like laser beam focus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I again that. That comes naturally. Yeah, and I think it's awesome. why I gravitated um, out of acting and into directing. And when did that happen? Uh, you know, very soon. On I the know you did a sitcom show, with Martin Mull. Well, on that show, yeah. I met an actor named Jack Riley, um, the late Jack Riley, who most of you probably know as uh, Stu, the voice of Stu on the Rugrats. But right. for those of us who are older, he was the famous Mr. Carlin on mm. uh, the oh New Heart God, Show. Yeah. But he took me aside on that show, and I was literally got that job four days after I arrived. Wow. Uh, and he said, do you think about directing? And I went, no. <laughs> I had taken one class at Penn State. I was awful. And I was awful not because I had a lot of the managerial skills. I had stage managed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I knew I was a good people handler. I just wasn't mature enough mm-hmm. um, when I was studying directing at the college level. And I thought thought, oh, you know, a lot has happened since then. I mean, I had one of my Penn State friends who was later my first roommate in New York. Her mom had passed away, and we had gone through that together. Um, And, you know, big life events change you. Right. And um, in that case, you know, I thought, oh, a lot has happened since then, and I've grown up a lot. And I thought, I think I am ready to tackle this. So I went back to my love, which was the theater, Mm -hmm. Um, a theater company I was already an acting member of. And I went, let's try this. And I took like a fish to water. Um, I know, because you directed me. Yes. Well, (laughs) and I remember remember just thinking all the things I don't like about acting, I get to not have to do. And all the things I love about acting – I can, this knowledge is probably what makes me the director I am. Mm -hmm. So in that case, the acting and the directing complemented each other in a a very, very um, important way for my directing career to take off. So because our show is called Hollywood Game Changers and we talk about your game-changing moments, would that have been one of the game-changing moments for you when you had the aha moment? Oh, I think so. mm -hmm. I think so, and realizing that I could go for it and that I was in a particularly good situation because um, there was a man who had worked for Norman Lear for years named Al Burton. He just passed away last year. Um, Who gave during the run of Charles in Charge, which was the first um, television show I directed, I think he gave, I'm trying to count, one, two, three, four. I think he gave five young women directors wow. their first episodes. See, that's, that's un that was unheard of at then. that time absolutely at that time yeah and um it, it was a remarkable opportunity now yes had i sat down and almost marked 99 episodes on paper in terms of the camera work mm-hmm. for, that was needed shot listing for that show yes um, so, so just so they understand, so you worked behind the scenes shadowing the director on Charles in yeah. Charge for 99 episodes. Well, Obviously, the thing you was, were getting paid. I was getting paid because I had another job on that show. So I, I was coaching. A, a, yeah. a, I was coaching. Mm-hmm. Coaching the kids. So, yeah. yeah. So that was a very great opportunity. And every day I got to see mm-hmm. the director who was on that episode. Right. Um, and that continued as a pattern when I wanted to switch from... Uh, being a sitcom director into an hour episodic director right that i went back to saying oh let me f- call up some directors and see if they would be open to me not coaching but shadowing mm-hmm. them mm-hmm. um which is still the case right you know where so many now there is a much formalized um opportunity in terms of the diversity uh programs that I have to applaud in this town, which are doing so well and mm-hmm. have changed the right. numbers remarkably for directing. For women, right? Well, and minorities. Right. I mean, just huge amounts of work has been coming out um, and opportunities. So in that case, uh, shadowing is very often a part of these programs mm-hmm. um, and learning best practices from people who you model yourself after. You right. go, oh, uh, that's exactly how I want to be. So for for the um, for our listeners, 
explain what shadowing is. It's so basically um, on a show where you're not already on staff. It's uh, showing up at call time, mm -hmm. and it's staying there for the entire day with no pay. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I've literally flown myself to other cities to do that mm -hmm. on my own dime. Um, and staying for the entire day. While I'm there, I always try to do as much of the work as the director as possible, except obviously for directing the actors and telling the, everybody what to do, but I'm doing at least the work on paper. Mm -hmm. Which um, would be? Which would be a sh marking shots. Mm -hmm. And how would I cover with the cameras? Mm -hmm. Each scene. Each scene. Okay. And in most cases, I would try to get there in time for prep as well. So I would go through the choosing locations, you know, looking at a location mm -hmm. saying, oh, how would where would I shoot this in right. this room? Right. Is this the location I would choose over the three others we've looked at? Right. So I had I had a lot of great great directors who allowed me to do that. Uh, the uh, one of the most influential is a person I wrote my third book with, which is Bethany Rooney, oh, who remains well, my know you, dearest you, friend oh, today. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so. In regards to, uh, so you say you, you literally block out the shots, you plan the shots, you plan the location where you're gonna shoot in the room and just mark the scenes. So uh, you're not sharing that necessarily with the no, director. No, it's my own It's my own homework. Yeah, it's your own homework. And if someone comes up to me, I mean, there are directors who would- Come up, what do you think? To, yeah, or what, do, what would you do with this scene? Right. And sometimes, uh, you know, here's what happens. There's a confidence level that it takes to do almost anything well. Right. And when, and I knew this when, when I started in sitcoms where I go, my plan is just as good or sometimes better than what they have planned. And when I knew that for sure, I knew I was ready to direct. Okay. Um, so. Can we talk about sitcoms a little bit? Because I, I know you wrote to. this amazing book. Yeah. This is and the he, older one, the sitcom career uh, book. The sitcom career book by Mary Lou Belli. Yeah. And then, and then there's uh, a the new sitcom career book. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> which is updated, I'm sure. Yeah. I love the scenes in here. But can you talk a little bit about because um, comedy is such a? Uh, I mean, I, I dying is easy. Comedy is hard. <laughs> yeah, dying is easy. Comedy is hard. Uh, I mean, I. I don't know. I, I I feel like it was something I was born with, if you if if you will. I don't know. I understand the timing. I get it. I don't know how you how do you teach it. You know, a lot of people think you can't teach it. I completely disagree with that. Um, Tell me about how you go about doing well, that. Well, you know, I, I teach a um a, a sitcom, a sitcom intensive mm -hmm. weekend. I, I I now I only get to squeeze it in usually once a year. Um. Because she's so busy. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so great. Um, but uh, basically, Friday night begins with what I call my drill and kill class. So over the course of and two hours, m almost every participant will do at least 30 jokes. And for me, it's about, and the first exercise they I do write in that them class, or no, no, they perform them. Okay. And that's after doing um, my first exercise in that class, which is a find the joke exercise, mm. which is about um, identifying jokes and recognizing them in almost any format. And I always say, you know, I'm using a sitcom scene to teach you this, but you can go back and look at Noel Coward. Right. You can look at Goldoni. You can right. look at Shakespeare and go, oh, structurally, these are all the same. So part of the problem I found with people who don't do comedy uh, right. as a natural instinct is that some of them just don't know it's there. Uh, so if you can show them, oh, mm -hmm. it's this, and you can recognize it by this, this, and this sign, I call literally that find the joke exercise a, a, a treasure map. Right. It's a treasure map that I hope they keep after the class because they'll go, oh, Mary Lou just said if I just look at the period, go back three words and right. you know, see if that, that has a K or P in it. It might be funny, and I need to recognize these these clues. Right. So, um, and then. But what about delivery? Different. Well, and then delivery starts with teaching the ear to hear the rhythms, mm -hmm. and not everybody does that naturally. Mm -hmm. Some people do it naturally and don't know why it's funny. Yeah. Um, I I think there was something um, that happened to Matt LeBlanc 
uh, like his second year of Friends. Friends, where he was gifted the first year, and by the second or third season, he was crafted mm -hmm. in a way that was so amazing. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it happen on sitcoms where I've been there for multiple seasons, where you just go, they're funny, but they don't know why yet. And then they all of a sudden have that aha moment of, right. oh, I know exactly what will make mm -hmm. this joke funnier. And you know, that has served me. I remember going into the editing bay on my first episode of Monk, and I was like the new kid in town. It was a big deal that I was- This was the first episodic. My first right. hour episodic, right. I'd gotten the job because Tony Schlue had right. asked for me, yes. um, with a little prodding from his wonderful wife, Brooke Adams. <laughs> um, and and uh, I went in and I said, shave a couple seconds off of the way that the editor had timed the setup and the punchline of you know what was very much a character-driven joke. And they looked at me like, who the hell are you coming into the edit bay and telling us to Ooh. shave off a couple frames? And I, and I laughed it off and I said, oh, just try it. <laughs> and it was the assistant editor in the chair, I remember, did it. And there were six people in the room. He played it back and there were a couple giggles at the first time they played it. Shaving three frames off of it, there was a loud guffaw. Wow. So it's, it's just about hearing it. Now, do I thank the fact that I sang and played the piano and did all those things and mm. I have a sense of have rhythming, ear. timing, right. and I have good ear? And is it sometimes easier for people who have those natural abilities? Yeah, I think it's why people who come from musical comedy have a very easy transition right. into sitcoms. Um, but... Uh, there are things you can do to enhance your skill set and your luck factor, mm -hmm. you know, just by having certain fundamentals under your belt. Um, I always love in the classes I teach to see that aha moment. And sometimes it happens when an actor is performing, but it also happens sometimes when someone else is performing and they're watching and they go, all of a sudden they heard how right. they would do it differently. Right. But it's because I've trained their ear. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it's about trusting that training right. and then doing all the other stuff that dying is easy, comedy is hard, <laughs> is that you have to have all those rhythms, all those cadences, and do all the other acting work that you would do if you were, right. you know, doing anything. dying yeah. as Ophelia. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> of course, because everything's, you know, in comedy, it's, it's, uh, it matters more. Yeah. Everything's heightened. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, the extremes. Um, well, very good. I mean, I love that. I, now I want to take the class just because. Oh, I think do it would be it's so fun. Uh, April, I think seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth, whatever that is. Oh, in, yeah. Wow, right around my birthday. Oh. Um, so, all right. So we have one game-changing moment. Was there another game-changing moment for you where you were like, okay? I, I had mean, a obviously... personal one. Oh, please, yes, we love. I those. had a personal one when my husband and I decided when we got married to never have children. And of course, I know you, I know your sons yes. since he was a, a, a Tiny, wee one, yes. and you know mine since yes. they were wee ones. Um, and um, I didn't know you weren't gonna have kids. We weren't gonna have children. We were very much dedicated to, we had met at a commercial audition on roller skates, and we had moved to ca from New York to California <laughs> right. to, to pursue our, our, our show business dreams. Um, we joined theater com a theater company out here that he had already been a member of, because he had started in LA before he moved to New York where we met. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I, re I was on a set of a comedy, a film called The Problem Child, or Problem Child, I can't remember if there was a the in front with, of it. Um, with Jason, with um, not Ritter, John, John, with John yes, Ritter. John Ritter, yeah, yes. And Amy. And um, I was there to coach the child who was playing The Problem Child during reshoots. I wasn't there for the um, principal photography, but they, it was a sizable, I think we were down in, te in Texas for, almost a week okay um and the child uh we were doing a big big uh circus with a big top 10 and i'm talking really 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 high we're talking three different arenas um uh uh one with lions in it wow. you know and our child had to climbed up a ladder and he was at, he was going to be doing the scene at the very very top height of the tent and he bumped his head. It wasn't anything grave. I think he maybe got a little bump on it. I think we were filming within 20 minutes after it happened. But they brought him down this huge, huge, huge ladder that reached up to the top of the big top. And 
there were by that time 60 crew members waiting to see if He's Michael okay. was okay right. and Michael ran into my arms <laughs> and I don't know if it was a <laughs> hormone thing or right. whatever right, but right. I called my husband from Texas that night and I said I think I want to have a baby oh what my do you God. think about that wow and um he said okay <laughs> wow. May, which is about the way how we also got engaged, which was like... What do you think about getting married? <laughs> which we asked each other at least a half a dozen times, and the answer was always, I don't know, how about you? <laughs> and then one time he, he, he posed the question, I went, okay. Oh, my God. And there was this pause, because that wasn't the response. <laughs> right, 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 right. And um, then we got... Oh. Married a couple of years. And you're such a great couple. You're yeah, a we've team. been married decades, yeah. And, yeah. and it's been such a nice collaboration. Uh, it is. Yeah. It is. And I don't have. Uh, my life is different because of him. Mm -hmm. And I treasure every moment that we have together. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, having children. Having children. A personal we have game changing moment. I know from wonderful, wonderful yeah. kids. Yeah. One's an actor. One's an actor. Yeah. One's an actor. Tim Doherty. He's funny and he's fabulous. Uh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> he was actually coaching uh, someone else. You know, putting a, a audition down on camera. Oh, you know, awesome. and he said, Mom, <laughs> I don't know if I should say this. He said, I'm making more money doing this than I pay when I get my auditions taped. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Is he in New York? He's in New York. Oh, okay, he actually yeah. lives in Brooklyn, <clears throat> and he teaches uh, both an adult and a children's class. He came from an improv background. Right. You know, we put him with mm. someone who had actually studied with Viola Spolin mm. um, when he was about seven, only because the opportunity was there, and we knew... Um, I'm going to remember her last name was Melinda. Mm, Martha Melinda, who was his teacher, um, we knew she was the real thing. Oh, wow. And um, he... Uh, and yeah, he's very, very dry, funny. Yes, he's very dry, funny. He's got, he's got impeccable timing yeah. and never crumbles under pressure. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, just like the two of you, you're amazing. So, all right, so here you are. Do you prefer doing sitcoms or do you prefer directing? Um, you know, I love uh, both. And I have to say that knowing comedy, um, just like knowing acting made me the director I am, if I had to do it all over again, I probably would start in sitcoms again because mm, it was such good training. a great foundation. And, again what I said about knowing, having that confidence about, I know mm -hmm. how to do this. Um, I know how to deliver the funny and I can help someone who doesn't mm -hmm. how to get there. Right. So that helps because in any drama, there are those moments of levity. Um, and I learned confused. part I mean, of this. Bowls can be very funny. Oh yeah, yeah. there's I and, and I love being attracted to yeah. I love I, I am attracted to material like that and I love when I get a chance to do it. Right. Um uh because they disarm the audience viewer from knowing something really terrible is coming. Right. Um and I learned that from Whoopi Goldberg. Her oh. first Broadway show, I remember seeing her a couple sketches and I go oh my god she does this all the time she disarms you and then goes for the jugular in terms of mm. a pithy or very very funny or sometimes heart-wrenching turn mm. um, in terms of her misdirects and I thought wow that's a <laughs> great way to go yeah and, and, it, and it works in life. Uh, one thing I am not in real life is I, I'm around a lot of funny people I just spent many, many days with my other mentor, um, Michael Lembeck, Aww. as well as you know Phil Ramuna, who I wrote that sitcom book with. But Michael Lembeck is, you know, there's people who are just funny yes. all the time. Yes, he's funny all and the time. And I, you know, I am, uh, just as I feel this in awe when I'm around people who I acknowledge are way smarter than I am, I just, I just can, I'm the best audience. I'm the best audience for saying, wow, you're, I'll laugh, I'll laugh. I, sleight of hand, I've been around magicians who, you know, you sit literally as close as we are right now, and, and, you and no you're idea. going, 
how did they do that? Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, and that's something really, uh, you you are always looking for, how do they do that, how they get there, what they do, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, that's you know. That's what I see in you. And I I don't know if it's, if it's the generation, Mary Lou, but um, I don't see people um, eagerly, very few, eagerly really going for what it is necessary to achieve success. Yeah, and you know what, it's interesting when I, I've, I've the th- I've written four books now. Three of them I co-wrote. And in each case, um, I think this, the special thing I brought to them is all of them have exercises in them. Yeah. And when there's a problem of how do we teach this skill set, and I did it as a university professor too, I go, what exercise can I do to build not necessarily the entire skill set, but the piece that's missing? Mm-hmm. Um, which is one of the reasons the game we're going to play later oh, good. is one of the um, I, I play this game for one of those reasons it it helps me in a certain way figure it out yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I love I remember being a stand-in on a movie um, and I don't mean this to be egotistical but I thought boy, I think I could do this faster. And I had no idea of all the things that were going on on right, set. Right, sure. But to this day, I did it when I was a teacher and said, how could I have made that class better? Mm-hmm. But I leave a set every day and go, could I have done better? And if so, what would have made this day flow better? Mm-hmm. What? Or, you know, there's that, those wonderful times when you leave and go, I knocked this out of the park today. Yeah, right. It's not every day. I wish I could tell you it was. Right. But we just go, wow. Um, so I'm always trying to improve my skill set because honoring other people's time mm-hmm. and artistry right. and, in my case, huge amounts of money, money right. um, I don't take it lightly. Right. Uh, well, that's the great business part of you, too. So what happens when you get an actor... Let's say you don't pick the actors, do you? Uh, when I'm casting television? Right. Oh, yes, casting is a huge part of my job. Oh, it is? Um, yeah. In the, in the one hour? or cause In I both. Always, oh, in I both. had no I idea. Always, I always thought I it was the producers. I insist on casting. Um, well, yes, but the director always weighs in with their weighs first in. choice. Okay. Now, have I been outvoted or <laughs> out ranked mm-hmm. in some of those decisions? Yeah, but I would say... I would say more than 85% of the time I get my top choice. Ah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I always yeah. thought it was uh, somehow related to the producers. You know, and um, then, the then Director's you, they Guild... they show up and there you are. It's a creative right that the Director's Guild mm. has fought fiercely I to see. have and retain. So um, I don't take it lightly. And, uh, and now, do all directors do it? No. no, and to them I say, shame on you. Right. Use it, or we'll all right. y- lose, lose it. it. Right. Um, but I have been a person who said, you know, they at, there was an Atlanta show, and their experience going from the sound stage, where they shot most of the episodes, to where the casting director's office was, an awful commute in right. midday traffic in right. Atlanta, or late day traffic, and. Uh, my, Oz Scott, I remember he goes, why don't we have auditions here? Make them come to us. <laughs> and I think, I, I'm hoping that ever since we did that, oh, it makes a it's difference. been a best practice on that show. Right. Um, which was, thank you, Oz, a great idea, but also right. a person who's an actor's director right. who, who cared about it. And you learn it when you get burned. When you get a tape as opposed to being in the room with someone right, right. and the tape isn't in an accurate assessment nor any assessment of how you would work with that actor and then the time on set is mm. not all it should be it's you get burned and you go whose fault was that mm-hmm. you know i did i fight hard enough to have to be at that casting session or perhaps should i have uh, I remember a distinct, uh, or should I have shown up mm-hmm. anyway? Right. I remember another show in Atlanta I directed that uh, there were about 15 tapes sent to me. I watched them all. I might, had my top five and um, or six or seven, and I said, let's look at all of these. I know who I, I think I want from. And the top two got knocked off the list from their tapes. And the person who did the episode, who I have subsequently tried to hire again because he was so good, was a person who just 
was creative and, and directable and just fabulous in the room. Because so many of the auditions are self-taped now and submitted, uh, I mean, so many, um, how, what do you, what can you tell actors out there well, <coughs> first, to do on their tapes? Always insist on doing two takes and give me two different versions. Mm. Always put your first choice uh -huh. of what you gut feeling know this should be like. So just as we do it here, we tape here, so you would put, uh, compress it into one file. Yes. Take one, take two. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, even if they don't ask for it. Even if they don't ask for it. Okay. And then, will that the casting director forward both of them? No, but that casting director might have a better idea okay. of what the director or producers are looking so they for. Might and look, submit the one. Yeah. Okay. But you've given them the <clears throat> option. <clears throat> now, because <clears throat> sorry, we put it, we compress it in one take. They would just extract a portion of it. Uh, uh, so not my strength. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No worries. No. Um, anything else that you can tell? Uh, I like that. I yeah, love that make, already. Make sure that the scene works. I love people who have when there's multiple people that are in the scene. Don't read with your reader choose your reader as one of the characters and all the other characters place somewhere fairly else. close to camera, right. but somewhere else. Because mm -hmm. for me, it's not just, do you understand the text? Do you understand what the scene's about? For me, it's, un it's showing that your character, especially with a scene that has multiple people in it, mm -hmm. your point of view about how you feel about this character as opposed to the other character. Right. And if that's how we are as people, right. and if that ingredient's not there, you're missing a huge portion of the scene. Yeah, <clears throat> and then I also, oh, I always say to actors, don't have your head in the script if right. you're on book, but more important that uh, what you s the the words you say are rarely the thing that get you the job. For me, it's a reaction to what you heard. Mm -hmm. So it's about the quality of listening in mm -hmm. character that right. you do that makes me go, oh, he or she is that person. Right. Now I'm constantly saying it's it's not about the words. It's what you, how yeah. you lift it off the page. Yeah. And now, now that being said, if it's Sorkin or it's a sitcom, oh, then it is the, about words, the words. <laughs> the words have to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay if you lift them off the page if in order to deliver that. Right. Yeah. Well, that's all about because of the timing, the way you write. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That no, it was no accident the way that the those words were constructed and laid out. So a uh, little shift here because I know you're doing producing now. Of course, yeah. that's it's one area that Mary Lou, you know, had left right to untouched producing. What yeah. do you? What's that about? Um, most of the producing now is about advocacy. Mm. So it's about finding a project. Uh, well, in two two realms. The producing I'm doing for myself, for my own projects, it's about, and I wish producing was the first step, it's about development. Um, uh, I've just had a, a an agreement to option three books that I hope will be a TV series. Oh my God. You know, or at least on their way to being a TV series a year from now. I'm, I have a meeting this week with a, a writer and, of a pilot that I, I was be given as a consideration of something I would like to attach myself to, which this script I adore. Um, there's another piece where I was given a piece of material that was written by an exec producer of one of the shows I'm currently directing and thought it was a brilliant piece. And I was able to introduce that person to uh, the... Um, the person in this case, a very, very lauded actress of our time who might direct it or attach herself as a production company so to it. So you're not going to be directing these as well? Well, if the series goes, I would definitely be directing. Okay. And a producer on the show. Okay. So in each case, it's a, it's a different ingredient for me. But the, the producing I do for um, attaching myself to young directors who come to me and go, I really want to get this off the ground, sometimes just my name, but also my skill set in terms of mentoring them. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what I take. I don't charge them any money, mm -hmm. but I go, I'll come out on exec producer. I might introduce you to the key person. I have a person uh, that, I uh, that I'm that i working at the Director's Guild with during, in their mentorship protege program 
who needed the lead on a short movie. She just did, and the movie came out great. Uh, her name is Drew Rosenberg. She's a really talented director, like decades in the business as one of the best ADs with a fabulous reputation, but she's a director. Mm -hmm. She's not an AD, you know? She, right. she wasn't lucky enough as I was coming up that someone said, hey, mm -hmm. you know, we're gonna let you d direct this first episode and that second episode. Um, so uh, I in introduced her to a, f a fabulous actress named Danielle Savra, who's on uh, Station 19. Right. She loved the script and n really made this movie what it is. She's so good in it. Oh and Drew, God, awesome. relationship as a director with her was so great. So when you're when you're directing, uh, I'm, I'm sure you you know have your favorite shows and your favorite actors. Um, do do they you know the stars? Do they say, oh, we want Mary Lou to direct another one? Oh, that's how I get come back. Michael Weatherly knocked on my door as I was leaving <laughs> Bull, um, or as uh, I was about to head to the airport to Kennedy Airport, um, and he said, oh, we have to have you back. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. So hopefully that happens. Yeah. Um, and uh, the same, you know, getting asked back is a big deal as a director. Yes, it is. Um, and there's any number of reasons why you don't get asked back. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you didn't get the best script in the world. Mm. Sometimes it was a chemistry thing. But hopefully, you know, all the things align and, and you do get asked back and you want to go back. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on my fifth season with NCIS New Orleans it oh. going and I do a, multiple episodes um, every season and it's like going to New Orleans staying in one of the nicest hotels on the planet and <laughs> going to set and putting on my favorite pair of slippers uh. and just getting to play with the with all the talented cast from Vanessa to Nakar to Charles to Scott right. um, great. to Chill Mitchell you know second series I've done with him and you just go wow yeah I'm so lucky so so great yeah this and also amazing. it's easy it's it makes it a shorthand once once you've been at a series and you're there for your second episode or more um, it's not like you're learning the ropes which is one of the hard parts about being a guest director um, but you're coming in knowing the climate having a feel for how the actors work, right, exactly. having a feel for all your department heads and how you interact with them. Um, for instance, the prop department at NCIS New Orleans are like some of my favorite people on the planet. <laughs> I literally get off the airplane, I walk in the building, and rather than going to my office, you go to the prop office. I go, yes, because I want to say, how did you make that oh. box? Can I see it in person from three episodes ago that I didn't direct, right. but was looked so fabulous on screen wow. that you just want to say, you know, yeah, that, that's wow, great. wow, wow. It's also the job that if any in, if I couldn't do what I do in the business. You'd do props. Oh, and specifically, I would do props on a medical show. Oh, wow. I want, I want to be able to do that one where, you know, you reset a bone that's sticking out oh and you unpop God. a balloon to <laughs> pull it. And, and, and the blood has to ooze and all that. And you wow. just go, if I could have, you know how most people wanted to invent post-its? If I could have invented anything, it would be a prop cadaver. <laughs> no, it's the prop um, uh, knife. Oh. That, in, that they, they make incisions with right that has a little tube coming out of it so that when you depress it, it which really isn't cutting you leaves a perfect trail. line of blood wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's genius you, okay you're you're a little genius. you're freaking me out now <laughs> that's so funny you're right you know, and I don't. I don't think I ever thought about that. I don't even thought, oh my God, someone invented a knife because they're obviously not cutting somebody, and it's not like there's a blood pack in the hand. All this stuff that you think is really happening out there in the real world, you know, it's all props, smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors. And now some of this is just CGI. Yeah, that's true. Although yeah. I did watch a show, a big budget show, the other night, and thought that green screen work is awful. Oh, really? But I won't even mention. Oh, the show. Okay, all right. Hey. Um, what what do you wish actors knew about directors? First, that we love you, mm. uh, and we always want you to do your best. 
Uh, and that um, if we don't praise you as much as you mm. would like or need, um, I would always assume that you're doing a brilliant job unless otherwise noted. And if you do get noted, know that it's never a criticism. It's it's like improv people go, it's yes, yes and. and. Right. So and it's, this flavor. I see you can do this. How about this? Mm -hmm. So then we're just playing with you. So be complimented by a note. Mm -hmm. Because A, we wouldn't give it if we didn't think you could do it. Right. Which in and of itself is a compliment. Right. Um, and it's about what else, you okay. know? And sometimes it's what brilliance. I mean, I cannot tell you how many directors will tell you that one extra take they did where they go, this one's for you. This is a bonus. We've mm -hmm. got time. You want to do another right. one? And you're like jaw, you know, jaw-droppingly amazed. You know, I remember going to see a, a, an actress who I had co who I had directed for seven years on the series. She invited me two years after the series was over to go see her in a play. And this was a character that had a lot of depth and breadth to mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. um, and thinking, I saw, I've seen this actress do everything. There was a piece of theater where she had chosen to do this part. And I went, I had no idea she could do that. Wow. And then the next film she made, or the next series she did, was another aspect of wow. where you just go, so um, we never want to put you in a box. Mm -hmm. We want to see... Everything. Everything. Yeah. And at the same time, mm -hmm. don't ever come unprepared. Mm -hmm. The amount of money per second that yeah. is being spent, um, there's no better way for me to remember and want to work with you again is if you just come in knowing your stuff, especially under pressure. Right. Especially at the end of the day where it might be one take. And when you nail that, I remember... Um, suggesting an actor from LA for an Atlanta. I knew he had worked local hire and would probably do it, and that's the amount of money they wanted to spend on right. that particular role. Uh, he came in, end of the day, it was a three-page scene with one of our formidable actors on that show. And it was a very technical thing. He had to play this certain part. The actor's name was Darren Toon, is Darren Toonder. Oh, I know Darren. And I had sent him, he, had, he was playing this sleazy lawyer and he had to use these ball bearings in a clicking fashion in his hand in a very repetitive way, and it had to annoy the actress he was working with. Mm -hmm. Well, I had sent him, I had the prop person, right. sent him an extra pair, so on his plane ride, he God could... knows the person who sat next to him <laughs> on <laughs> the Delta to kill him. wanted the to kill him. the plugs in. <laughs> but he nailed it on the first take. Yeah. Nailed it. Now, good karma. Yeah. End of the day, everybody's out of the sound stage. Um, I'm wrapping up things in my dressing room. He's leaving his dressing room and going to the hotel that he probably paid for himself mm -hmm. so that he could do this local hire. Um, he said, hey, I just got sides for an audition. Will you read it with me and hold my phone so we can tape it? I did, and he got that oh, job too. Oh my God, I think I remember this. I think I remember because we were doing some seminar together. I love Darren. Yes, he's, he's skilled Amazing. and yeah. really created a very, very deep resume for himself mm -hmm. by willing to do um, stuff in Atlanta, stuff in Atlanta yeah. and other places. Mm. And I encourage actors to do that. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Um, what else can I ask you? Um, boop, 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 boop. Oh, you, well, we talked about your sitcom class. Oh, your Emmys. Let's talk about your <laughs> Emmys. You know, my Emmys are about advocacy. Well, the first one was... I, there was a wonderful, um, you probably worked with her, Nancy Malone. Oh, yes. A director who's no longer with us, but um, Nancy advocated for 10 women directors to do their short documentaries that fit together as a big documentary, and it won a lo LA Local Emmy. And then I've gone on to do that same project. They're not paying for 10 directors, but I think we've had up to six or two or... Um, or three, depending on the budget. Um, I've done it for many other directors mm. as uh, subsequently. Um, so both of them were with programs, and the exec, one of the exec producers' uh, name is Robin G, mm. who we've followed her through three television 
um, stations that she's been with. It started in the city of Santa Monica. We were at an LAUSD PBS station with her. And the one that just aired before Christmas was a PBS station with a huge grant she got, again, for six women directors um, to tell stories about advocating in the community. Mm. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's rewarding and it's a place where I can do things that I think matter. Mm. Um, and not that, that, you know, entertaining doesn't right. matter. It does. Um, but, and especially with the kind of material I like to choose because right. I want to, I want people to want to sit in front of that TV or pull out their phone or their, like you know, that. tablet mm -hmm. and say, oh, I just want to escape for a little while. Mm -hmm. So, Well, I mean, television entertainment is very important. You know, yeah. It's a, it, and, and so much now because it's reflecting the times and all the stories are very current, cur current news, if you will, used in a dramatic setting. I think it's important. I was saying to um, uh, one of the exec producer, the producer director on Blue Bloods, I said, you tackle stuff that I turn off the TV and I think about it for another week. Right. I go... Yep. You know, and 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 it's not the only show. You know, there's so many that you just go, wow, wow. that mm -hmm. stayed with me. Yep. It made me think. It made me examine. Yeah. It made me want to talk about it with other people. Yeah. Um, I just think we couldn't be in a better time. Oh, you know, no, the absolutely. two of us working in this industry. Oh, it's it's we're the, the golden age, yep. the second golden age of television. Yeah, yeah. We're going to take a little break, and we're going to come back and play uh, a game that Mary Lou has her favorite game, which is called Sets. So uh, we'll be right back. So I am back with Mary Lou Belli, uh, amazing director and producer. Her favorite game is called Sets. It's a card game in which players must match cards according to color, symbols, and shading. So if you can see here, there's um, symbols. There's obviously colors. Okay, I have no idea how we're going to match them, but the person who gets the most matching set wins. Do you want to do a little description of how we do this? Yeah, um, okay. this is a, um, a, an educational game oh, that my children, who both have disabilities, oh, wow. were given, and um, it's a little bit addictive. Okay. I use it. <laughs> to um, kind of a left brain, right brain thing, that okay. when my brain is mush, but I know I have to be functioning, <laughs> I can turn what I'm normally doing off by concentrating on this, yeah. and I don't have to do it, and it functions as a game you can play with other people. Oh, it can, okay. And you it's can a play, play you by can, yourself. and you can play it by yourself. So and I, I play it, when you're with other people, it can be competitive or not. Okay. So, um, like, are these so, a set? So, here's what a set is. Okay. A set has to be, as you said, there were uh, those three categories, mm -hmm. plus the fourth category is numbers. Numbers, okay. So, you'll notice that on these cards, there's either one, one two, or three. two, or three. Yep. They all have, and there's uh, three uh, shadings that they're empty, they're striped, or they're solid. Mm -hmm. um, and there's three shapes there's right. the squigglies, the diamonds, and the ovals. Right. Um, and then there's three colors. There's purple, green, and orange. Yeah, or red. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> my, son, my daughter and I have an argument on reds and greens oh, all the okay. time. <laughs> so, um, in each of those four categories, mm -hmm. to make a set, they have to be all the same or all different in all four categories. Wow. So, let me show you one set. Okay. So, this is a set. This is all the same color, all the same pattern, all the same filling but three different numbers. There's I one see. of these, two of these, and three of these. Okay. Now, whenever you just fill in those three that are missing, okay. but this is also um, a set. No, yes, this, this, and this. So it's all, no, oh, no, it's not. This, no, that's not a set. Um, because it's the same color. It's right? the same color. Purple, now, purple. if I if this was th looked like this but had three in it. Yeah, that would be a set. So it's just about, it's a visual game mm -hmm. that you have to look at the I entire it has, board. It has to be three. I thought it, it was has two. to be three. A set always. To a me set has so to be three. Three. Okay, so this there's nothing here. Well, there might be. I just have to look harder to see if there is something. Some are harder to find than others. I'm going to show you almost a set. Right. So if I did this, this, and the purple. Well, no, because if it's purple, this one would oh, have to be red. Squiggle. 
Exactly. It right. would have to be filled Spangle. inside. Right. So um, sometimes there's a set here. Sometimes there isn't. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do when there's not? If there really isn't one, then I agree with the partner or by myself to just add one. But it's, it's, it's not a fast game, oh. <laughs> as you can tell. What about this? No, because they're both squiggly. Yeah, not, a, not solid. Okay. There's a set here. Oh. Three different colors, all the same inside, three different shapes, oh. three different colors. Oh, this is challenging. Three different numbers. Okay. Oh, yeah. Got it. Okay. So it's 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 uh, so um, with I may not my win kids this one. with my kids who were dyslexic. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. This was good. This was this was mm -hmm. is was one of the exercises. Uh -huh. You know, they some of one of them specifically had. Now, if you can't do like this. It's, it can't be like that, three, three, three. It, yes, if I had, if you had a red uh -huh. diamond, then you have that so too. So you could do this, right? No? No, because They're this would have to be purple. 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 Mm. So here's what I do. Okay, um, so And people approach this. Some people say, look at the whole board all, all the time and can see it. I tend to do what I call building. Uh-huh. So I'm looking at this board, and what do you notice that is the unique thing on this? The unique thing? There's only one red card here. Oh, okay. Sometimes there's three, sometimes it's split. Okay. But with a red card, I would say, okay, if Let's I wanted to I build with something mm -hmm. with um, uh, all different, I know I could probably start with that one. A red one. Mm -hmm. Now, or you could say, oh, let's start with the ones. Mm -hmm. If I started with this. Oh, I see one. I see a. S oh, no. Um, or if I started with this, then I then say, let's look at the twos, mm -hmm. okay? But notice that both of my twos Have. are diamonds, mm -hmm. you know, in the purple. Right. And. Squiggle, squiggle. Yeah. And diamond, diamond. So that's not going to work. Because mm -hmm. I know oh, now I'm doing something that yeah. has to be so all the same or all, all different. The different. In all the same so let me just add one and see okay. if that helps. All the same or all different, but it has to be one, two, three, right? No, it could oh. be one, one, one. If I had oh. this, this, and a red, a red one that looked like this but was open, that would be a set too. Wow, well, so it's just about there's there's so, so many, many possibilities. Combos. Yeah. So you could do that. <laughs> you see my one? son, my no, my son had some friends over. Uh, uh, at the holiday time when he was over, mm -hmm. and there was a kid. Before the card was on the table, he had, he just saw it. And then I had another person who was playing the game at the same time who never wanted to see these cards again because he had the amount of frustration was. Now, this is not be because it's green, so it has to be different in every aspect, right? Well, no, you could go, okay, so if you wanted the, the answer to this set, uh -huh. it would have to be this with stripes. Can't Does that make sense? I see, because it's all green. Right. Hmm. This is hard, people, really hard, and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. And there's people who love it, and there's people who hate it. Can we do one more? One more round? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, well, basically, I would just keep adding to that round. Oh, I see. But let me. I'm not going to shuffle because I. All right. Let me see if there's one. See if I. Yeah. No. Why? Because this Same would have to be diamonds. I see. But. But now, it, 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 to understand all mm -hmm. the all mm -hmm. the possibilities mm -hmm. alone is difficult. Mm -hmm. But this is a set. Okay, got it. Uh, so would this be a set? It sure would be. Oh, yeah! 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 <laughs> Excellent. Uh, okay. Yes. Nope. Both solid on the inside. This would have to oh, be striped. Oh wow. Yes. But Six. the fact that you're trying to get all different, all different, all different uh -huh. is it's the harder. hardest kind of set to get. I see. So by that, I'm just impressed. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> but how about this, this, and this? Well, that's all different. Yeah. Okay. That's good. 
start building with this. Well, I was. I was looking at that. Okay, so there's a one. Is there a two? It could be a one, 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 but there is not a one, one, one here. But is there a one, well, two, three? Well, there's two. That's different. Or does it have to be shaded? No. Okay. No, but one, that means two. that means you have to have an inside that's green. Nope. Nope. It has to be once you you establish that these are the same, it has to be same and empty. But stay, start with this one again. That's a one. Right. Here's it, a two. Okay. But we don't have. Okay. What other twos are there? There's this one. Okay. So that's purple. So you'd have and to. And then this. Right. Set. Okay. <laughs> This is not easy, people. This is one of those, like, yeah. I would play this, though. Do they have this, like, online version? I think this? someone told me they th they think they did. Because I do like that. That's what I like to do at night before I go to yeah. bed. Exhaust my brain. I played a game that my sister introduced me to. We played cards growing up. Could these be a set? Let me see. Uh, no, one would have to be red. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh wait, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, one. But uh, she introduced me to this very complicated rummy hand that had 15 rounds, and it just gets exponentially harder how many runs. Is that and owns? I have no idea. That's I seven, think I, seven hands. Yeah, I, I, oh. maybe it's seven hands. Maybe okay. it's, it felt owns. like 15. Sue Ann, but, was it Sue Ann who introduced you to it? No, my sister did. But <laughs> boy, did I love playing that. But I have to tell you, when we were done, my brain hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we don't use it as no, much no, as no, we, don't. we should. Well, I'm having a little trouble here. Do you see one? I don't. But you see, I would just keep looking. Mm -hmm. So it can be all the same shadings, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. has, it has to be either all the same, color, shading, and, so, and shape. And, and color, shape. Sh shading, shading. shading. And number. Oh. So it's to be one. It could all be all ones. It could be. I'm going to show. Sometimes. Could be all ones, but it could be a one, two, three. Look. That's a set. Right. Because they're all different. But that's. That's not that's a set. That's not a set. But if you had. But the, this would make it a set. It would. Oh, because they're different. So there has to be some. All the same. And all similar. different. It, or it could be all the same, all the same, all the same. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I mean, if you had like a one in this, that would also be a set, right? What? A one exactly. peanut. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a peanut. I, I'm going to call it that from now on. It's a one peanut. See? I love Looks it. Looks like a peanut. It's a squiggle. But uh, I love it. Call it a, a super peanut. Super good game. It's a great game. That's it's a, a great game. Super fun and it's, game and, and it travels easy. Yes. And I would, so might, I would it bring it to commercial auditions. Oh. When, my, when Tim was a, a uh, young kid, oh, oh yeah, yeah, and I would put this out, and before, oh, all and the especially kids. when there were long waits, yeah, and the kids, and first of all, it's a silent game, right? <laughs> we like that. We like that. <laughs> we like that a lot. So that's my sets. So before we uh, before we wrap up, I want to know a little bit about what we can look forward to and what you would like us to uh, um, promote in your Instagram and all that the stuff. Last Sunday in March, yes, uh, I have an episode of NCIS New Orleans. Okay, uh, last Sunday in March. March. Catherine Beatty, okay. um, which I'm really, really, really proud of. Um, and um, what else? Uh, my latest book, which is Acting for the Screen, which is uh, 35 interviews with, interviews or essays by other people about the acting business wonderful is doing really well it's the fourth in a series and two more are in the works wow. i had nothing to do with the idea of it i was just asked to edit this one um that's fantastic i'm speaking at south by southwest at the film festival oh, and then i'm doing a panel at the julian dubuque film festival in iowa um and then i go back to new orleans to do uh a spin-off from a, another web series that has started as a pilot at Fox and it's the spin-off from Nikki and Nora oh, okay. and it's the new one's called Delta and Daisy so if you want to contribute I know they're looking for uh, funding but it's a great piece 
and it's very funny in the actresses attached. It's written by my friend Nancy Lee Myatt, who I would do anything for, Aww. and the chance to work with her again is, is very high on my list. Um, and um, just keep a good thought for all the wonderful directors I'm mentoring that are coming up. It's so Many great. of whom have done their first episodes this season, and I hope will explode um, next season with multiple episodes. Jen McGowan's already gotten her second episode. She finished a purge, and I think she's doing the Twilight Zone. So. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. No, it's so awesome. If you ever get a chance to do anything with Mary Lou Bell, I run, don't walk. Oh, thank you, Judy. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much.